Hey everyone, it's Miss Emma from North Bay. Today we are going to be talking about how photosynthesis and cellular respiration play a very important role in the carbon cycle. So let's get to it. All living things are made of carbon. It cycles through the oceans that we swim in, the land that we walk on, whether it be at your house or at North Bay. It's even the, in the air we breathe. You can find it in different plants and animals. You can find it in me and you. The cycling of carbon between the atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere is known as the carbon cycle. But how exactly does it cycle among these different spheres? And where does it go once it gets there? Let's start with the atmosphere. We all know the atmosphere as the air that surrounds us, not only here on Earth, but also out in space. Here in the atmosphere, we can find carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. Carbon in the atmosphere not only comes from us breathing, but it also comes from the burning of fossil fuels such as coal and oil. Within the hydrosphere, which includes anything in the realm of water, we know that carbon can diffuse directly into the water through a gas exchange on the surface in which the carbon then circulates throughout the water. It can be utilized by mollusks to produce shells or kelps and seaweeds for photosynthesis. There the carbon will stay until it's cycled into another sphere, say the geosphere. The geosphere includes all rocks, minerals, and ground that can be found here on Earth, including glaciers. Here, carbon is stored within that solid and stays there until it's released. This release can come from, say, an eruption of a volcano or mining for oil. Once carbon is released from the geosphere, it can end up cycling into our last sphere. The biosphere includes every living thing on our planet. That means plants, animals, and even us as humans. Here, carbon can be stored and cycled through two different processes. Does anybody know what either of those are called? Yes, you got it. <laughs> photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Let's really dig into what that means. Let's begin with photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the chemical process in which plants use sunlight to produce their own food from water and carbon dioxide. It begins when the plant absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through their stomata. By taking in water and carbon dioxide, our plant now has the tools it needs to make photosynthesis happen. Chlorophyll allows our plants to absorb sunlight and uses that energy to convert six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water into one molecule of sugar and six molecules of oxygen. The plant will utilize the glucose as an energy source and get rid of the byproduct, which is the oxygen, by releasing it into the atmosphere back through the stomata. Wow, I wish I could photosynthesize and create my own form of energy. Oh wait, I sort of can. It's called cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is the chemical process that takes place in our bodies, as well as the bodies of all living things without chlorophyll, where cells use water and oxygen to break down glucose and change it into a form of energy called ATP. ATP molecules are used directly by cells to provide us with energy. Think about it as baking a cake. What ingredients do you need? Let's say you need some sugar and you also need an egg. For cellular respiration, you need glucose and oxygen. When you combine those two ingredients, not the eggs and the flour, but instead the glucose and oxygen, you have created carbon dioxide, water, and energy. But do we use all these things? No. Just like we don't use the eggshell when baking with eggs, our body doesn't use the carbon dioxide and water that was created through cellular respiration. These are instead byproducts of this process and therefore recycle back into one of the spheres. Without both of these processes, photosynthesis and cellular respiration, the exchange of carbon throughout the spheres would be off balance. These processes are what helps keep carbon within the carbon cycle 
at stable levels worldwide. So I want you to all think, has there ever been a time in your life where you thought the byproduct of something you did seemed like a waste of time? Maybe you helped a friend study for a test and they still did poorly. Maybe you worked hard to gain a skill, but you weren't as good as you wanted to be. These can all seem like failures. However, the byproduct is the willingness to help, the willingness to be a good friend, the willingness to work hard and not give up. We can choose to see lifelong lessons in what we perceive to be failures. All right, well, this is Miss Emma signing off.